Hello, I've got uh, an Allen & Heath uh, mixer here, it's the Z22FX and this belongs to some friends of mine who are gigging musicians, they do a lot of the 60s sounds type of music however it has a little fault which is really important to them the auxiliary 3 output has uh, it stopped working but it's the actual socket it looks down there like there's either the end piece of a jack stuck down there or it's literally broken. You can see some sort of metal down there. Just changing that jack socket, well, it, it might take two hours to strip the board to take the panel off to get to that actual piece. Uh, I've not been inside the Allen & Heath mixer before, not this type, some of the older ones I have. It might be that these have separate circuit boards all running vertically for each uh, channel strip. So I won't have to undo those. It might be that these are separate circuit boards here. That would be handy because I'll only have to sort of start dismantling one piece to get into it. Uh, the other trick as well, I can't move any of the pots. They're all set up for their gig. So I've taken a lot of pictures already of all the pot positions and where they are and uh, which buttons are pressed in and, and things. So hopefully I'm going to put this back in their case if I repair that and it will be good to go for their gig type of thing. So I've kind of got a few limitations. Don't move any pots, don't move any faders. Uh, but anyhow, I'm rabbiting on here. I like Allen & Heath desks. I mean, I use the QU16, uh, very nice. At least with that you can just do a snapshot of everything and save it into memory. But this is an analog desk and all those buttons have got to stay where they are. Uh, anyhow, I shall flip this over, have a look inside and see what I need to take off here to get to that one socket there and try and get it fixed. So, don't nudge any of the buttons. Don't move any faders. It's a bit of a tall order. Now, if I use a couple of blocks of wood and I don't wobble it around too much, he says, there, that should kind of Keep the buttons off the desk. All right, start opening it up. Some of these screws, I've completely had it. But what I've done, I've kind of uh, marked with a pencil all the way around the different screws so they go in the same holes, even though there is a bit of a mishmash of things here. Little S for the star drives, uh, little X's for the posi drives, and one here that says F because it was kind of destroyed and hard to take it out. F meaning that that one is totally not in the best condition. So anyhow, uh, I think that's about it. Yes. All right, let's see what we've got to play with in here. Any earthen strips? Nope. Oh. Oh, well that is... Uh, that's kind of good news, really. Not only are all the channel strips separate boards, but they run up all the way to the actual ins and outs at the top as well. So, that, OK, that's fine. And uh, that means one of these boards here, I only have to undo a strip all the way down to actually lift that board out. But I don't know which one it is now because I flipped it over. Okay, that there, look, yeah, that's the effects in there. That's got all the uh, reverbs and everything, etc. all on that bit. It's a bit of fluff and crap in here. There's always crap and things in mixers. Uh, but yeah, that's all right. That's not too bad. It's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. So I should be able to just, uh, oh my God. That's only held on with one screw. And there's things hanging around in here as well. Where did that come from? From there, most likely. Oh, well. There's your power board. There's your effects thing. 
there, effects unit, and everything is sort of simple, separate strips. So I should be able to flip this back over and undo a whole row of whatever is on that uh, strip because I can't guess what it is from under here. I'll do a couple of little close-up shots for you anyway. And uh, this looks a bit... Oh God, there's only one screw holding that. I'm going to have to be careful. If I flip it over and that breaks off in my hand. Right. Of course, it's a bit more flexible, so you have to be a little bit more careful now. So get that over. Move that out of the way. So yeah, at least now I know anything sort of there is what I have to unscrew. And that should be a, a separate sort of board there. I hope, fingers crossed. Right, get some sockets. What we got, 11 millimeters, so. Two, three, four, and there's a screw there. I wonder if that's important as well. Let me have a look. Uh, mm, yes. Okay. Take that screw out as well. I like to try and put the same screws back into the same holes. So that's the board I want to actually remove. This one here. That's hard soldered into place to the power supply. Uh, and obviously this is in the way as well. All right, let's take this up. Oh, there's a screw in the middle. Will that lift up, please? Oh, it feels like it's got a, yeah, there's a plug and socket underneath it as well. Okay, put that to one side. That's nice. That just plugs into those. Uh, now, this has got to come up as well. Aha! It's moving. Yes. Brilliant. Unfortunately, it's got all these wires already soldered onto it, so that means I can't just get all this off the desk and just work on this. Now, which one was it? The third one down. Right, okay, try and find one of them. Oh dear, it's well and truly buggered, that one is. Uh, yeah, it kind of looks, because uh, some of the tabs are sticking up there, it kind of looks like there's a piece of metal stuck in the end here, and that's stopping that one from working. So there's two things you can do. You could drill a little hole there and then push something in to release the metal piece and then see if it just works as a jack plug again. Although it's a little bit battered, half the thread's actually gone on it. Or I could just replace the whole thing if I've got one. So I'm just going to have a look, see if I've got one of those and I'll try and just replace the entire thing. I think that would be the easiest way. So after a lot of digging around, I think I've found what I need to replace this. I've got loads of these, but they're kind of... Uh, they're going to look ugly because uh, this shaft goes through and then the bolt goes onto the actual thread. Whereas uh, on the design that Alan Heath has used here, they're uh, really nice. The actual uh, socket lines up with a hole and the thread is on the end piece there. So that goes in there and you've got a nice sort of shiny metal bit there as well. And that's the kind that the Alan Heath are using. The only problem is, I found I had quite a few of these that would have done the job, but not because all the uh, legs on them are tabs for soldering wires to, and this is through hole. So a bit more digging around, I eventually found one scrap board here that has got one of them just sitting there. So I'm going to try and desolder that and uh, hopefully use that to replace that one there. Now this is a desoldering gun and it's one of those devices I bought many years ago and very handy when it wants to work. A little bit expensive but you know once a year I actually 
get to need this and all it does is it heats the solder up and you press the button and it sucks the air through and hopefully sucks the solder off as well. So I'm going to try and uh, see how successful I'm going to be with this first. Sometimes if there's only uh, a few pins on a device it's easier just to solder it and you know pull the thing out. But let's try and do this properly. Come on. Hmm. You see? It sucks the solder off. Come on, focus. Ah, there you go. Sucks the solder away. Or most of it, at least. Right, I'll just do these other six and see if I can prise it up with a screwdriver. Brilliant. Is it going to be a perfect fit? Please, 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 be nice to me. Uh, yeah, it sticks up a little bit, but not too much. Maybe I can just pull one of the washers off there. By Jove, I think that might do. Yeah, the... Uh, the actual post of this one is sticking out a little bit far, so if we remove one of the washers, like so, that might work. Five, six, seven. Oh, there's a bent pin there. Ha <laughs> ha! One of these pins is sort of bent out of line, and uh, another use for these Q-tips, as one of my uh, commenters pointed out, is if you get the pin up so far, then the Q-tip is hollow when you cut it. So you can sort of get it on there over the bent pin and use it to push nearly there, almost. Just a little bit more of a push. There you go, and get the pin back into line. There, brilliant. Q-tips are so handy, aren't they? Now, why did that bend? I didn't bend it. Uh, I hope it wasn't supposed to be bent on purpose. Right, that's in, that's in. Uh, these plastic tab things are a complete waste of time because they're not even going through another board. They're just sort of tabbed in and holding nothing. It's not like this board is connecting to this board through a hole. So what is the point of that? No point whatsoever. Oh well. Uh, all the cables, all nice and flat. Everything's back in order. Right, I'm going to flip it over and uh, see what it's going to look like with this piece in it now. Yeah, as I suspected, it does stick up just a little bit. So that is going to need a washer on it. Now that piece goes on there. Mm, it's going to be sticking up slightly, that one is. That'll do. There you go. Job done. Now I'll flip it back and start putting all the screws in and try and find some new screws for it as well because it's a, it's a bit of a mess, all these little screws missing all over the place. It's not in the greatest condition anyway. But these sort of mixers will just keep working forever. But uh, anyhow, yeah, right. Get the back on and that's an easy peasy job. Uh, luckily that was an easy job because like I say some of these mixers if I uh, just pull up a Behringer like this is a, a small Behringer mixer but as you see everything is all on the one board it's not all separate little boards like this so you know to get in and do anything in there you've got to unscrew every single socket and take the uh, the threads off all the potentiometers and sliders and things to get the whole board out just to do a bit of work on it so yeah this actually is laid out and is easier to work on because it's all separate channels like so so uh, all right get the back on 
So if you could just kind of see inside there, it looks like a, a brass bolt or something has actually fallen down the hole, got stuck in the bottom, and uh, that's why this leg is still sticking up here. And probably, because they couldn't get the jack plug in, they've been ramming it in and out, and it's uh, eventually smashed all this away, and that's what's kind of destroyed it. But that's certainly, I'm sorry I can't get a great picture of it, but there's certainly something down the bottom there that looks like a brass bolt. Anyhow, uh, job's done. I've tested it. Uh, that's the one that I replaced just there. And yeah, it sticks up about a millimetre, but I've put a washer under there to help it along. Uh, so these guys, the Parlophones, can carry on rocking with the 60s sounds and things. That was actually an easy job. I really, really looked at this and thought, oh, what have I let myself into? Or, or what have I let myself in for? Because working on some mixers in the past, like I say, is an absolute nightmare because you have to disassemble so many things to get to one little bit that you want to change. So luckily, or fortunately, that did not turn out as bad as I thought it was going to be. Sometimes you can't judge everything uh, and until you've done the job. A lot of the jobs I do are actually really easy jobs, you know, they're very simple jobs, fixing buttons and cleaning contacts and things, but it's the time that's involved in getting to that piece of the job that you need to do, and that's always the most uh, difficult, because along the way you can always break something else. Anyhow, I won't carry on, this was probably a bit of a boring video, but I just thought I would... Uh, share that with you how that's reasonably a simple job to do that you could do at home if you can find the right socket and uh, yeah that's it it's just a little video about the sort of things i do so i shouldn't always assume that everything is going to be as it is when it turns out to be something else anyhow thanks very much for watching and uh, if you like that please give us a thumbs up and Click that little bell, because that always helps. And uh, thanks very much, and all the best. Bye-bye.